grit. Courage. Passion. Honor. The sound of an army helicopter can mean various things to various people, depending on which side one belongs to. A combat chopper's sound could instill fear into the enemy, leaving him a worried man scurrying for his personal safety. The same sound could symbolize the arrival of a savior, a helping hand, hope and happiness. Army aviators fly several sorties or missions every day to service troops in high altitude border areas. Some of these are meant for casualty evacuations or CASAVAC in military aviation parlance. They jump into action within moments of being notified of casualties, including combat related injuries diseases, as well as non-battle contingencies. The Army aviators and their lean and mean flying machines serve India's frontline troops round the clock, round the year. Sunshine, snow, rain and thunder. Nothing stops these aviators from reaching out to their fellow soldiers, manning forward posts on snowbound peaks and ridges. Many a times, a few minutes here and there can mean the difference between life and death. They rush to the spot immediately to help transport their bodies to the nearest base hospital. The aviators do not lose any time. The pilots do not even step out of the helicopters. They keep the motor running and fly back the moment the patient has boarded. land at the hospital's helipad right in time. For all such missions to succeed, 100% synergy between these highly motivated men and their helicopters is a must. For they both need to always perform at their optimum without fail. The most satisfying uh, experience for an aviator is to pick up a casualty and bring him back home safe and to see the look on the casualty's face that he's being saved. With the soldiers in safe hands, they are back at the Siachen Saviour Squadron at Leh after successfully concluding yet another rescue mission. Operations like these are routine tasks handled by army aviators day in and day out. These flying knights in their shining armors belong 
to the Army Aviation Corps. As they say, guts is the prerequisite to be here. Army Aviation is an extended arm of the ground troops in the third dimension. Established on 1st November 1986, the Army Aviation Corps is the youngest corps of the Indian Army. Previously, Army Aviation duties were performed by Air Observation Post Officers of the Artillery. In the 24 years of its existence, the Army Aviation Corps has done a yeoman service to the nation during war and during peace. All officers serving in the Indian Army can join the Army Aviation Corps to become pilots. Once upon a time, when I was not an aviator, I was sitting on that post. We have come from them. You know, whatever they are doing on the ground, we are doing the same thing. The only difference is that we are exploiting the third dimension. Once upon a time, I was going through the jungles for days on, days on for those patrolling and carrying out the task. Having learned all that, done all that, I've just got another platform now to exploit. I identify in totality with that man who's sitting on the ground because he's my man who's sitting there. Just yesterday, I was looking at somebody coming to help me for a particular situation. So you can understand the kind of uh, uh, trust and faith that man has in me and, and that passion that I have to deliver for him. Every army chopper pilot is thus a seasoned combatant with flying skills. The aviators never flinch before getting into their flying overalls and zooming off to the theater of action. The aviators also perform a wide range of battlefield operational tasks like picking up and dropping off soldiers. Psyops is a very important uh, and also an emotional exercise for us. Uh, we have uh, six lives on our hands and uh, we have to be very careful that when we fly, we keep not only the aircraft but also the uh, men who are hanging below us clear of all kinds of uh, obstructions, especially wire obstructions because they are very difficult to pick up, especially during uh, the night. The aviators thus work as force multipliers by providing rapid mobility of men and material at short notices. Army aviation is an important part of the maneuver arm of a field force commander in the third dimension. During wars, the army aviators operate with all the arms of the Indian Army as parts of its all arms concept. Army aviators play a tactical role in carrying out aerial reconnaissance of the battle zone and pinpointing enemy targets with precision. In wartime situations, the helicopters accompany armored columns as air observation posts. The helicopters usually fly ahead of the attacking columns and swiftly conduct an aerial survey of the battlefield. The data generated by them is used by the mechanized forces and the gunners to improvise, improve and redefine their operational strategies and attack the enemy with precision. The guns are placed at one end and the enemy is quite far off. And you are in the center on a helicopter observing the enemy. So you can direct the guns to fire at the left, right, as you are able to see the enemy from a height. Fire by order! Fire by order! They command their machines over plains, deserts, dense jungles, mighty mountains, and forever frozen battlefields. We are in the highest battlefield of the world, and flying is extreme here. 
The air here contains only a fraction of the oxygen that it has in the planes. The basic difference comes in the oxygen level. A fuel is be burning basically. You need a constant supply of oxygen to burn. So flying in high altitude means you have to be very calculative of everything. How much weight you are carrying, how much of power do you have in hand. Even a small mistake could be catastrophic. You can have a case where the fuel you mixture is not there and doesn't burn and your engine can just stop. No error. Error here means it's gone. In forward areas, the helicopters must always be in a fighting fit condition to service the troops. Average temperatures in this cold desert fluctuate between 35 degrees Celsius in summers and minus 60 degrees Celsius in winters. Extremely dry air, high solar radiation levels, loose sandy soil and thin atmosphere all of these put together take a heavy toll on these helicopters. For troops serving in inaccessible and often hostile border areas, these are their only connections to the world outside. The Indian Army's Aviation Corps has created a record of sorts by being the only army in the world to routinely operate helicopters at these seemingly impossible heights. They bring food, medicines, essential supplies, and above all, letters, a highly appreciated article in the soldiers' lists. Uh, expression on their face. It was a very basic thing if you're in a city. He had some letters from home. But the effect and the expressions in a field area, where 24 hours you got nothing, you only got snow around you, was different. So it was a good feeling. The helicopters disappear immediately after their Santa Claus act. After landing, the pilot does a mandatory check of the helicopter for its fitness. This is a standard operating procedure. Every sortie flown here is a lesson learned. And every safe landing that we make is an accomplishment in itself. The Mission Army candidates arrive at the Combat Army Aviation Training School. First ride with helicopter. When it comes to servicing troops in extremely inaccessible high altitude zones, the Cheetah helicopter has no competition. If not for the Cheetah, maintaining troops in the world's highest battlefield may have been impossible for India. Cheetah makes more landings at 20,000 feet in the Siachen Glacier than any other helicopter. Seeing it soar effortlessly over these ridges and landing smoothly on top of ice pillars, barely 10 feet by 10 feet, it may be hard to believe that this is a chopper designed way back in 1957. The Cheetah is the Indian name for this French Alouette 3 helicopter. It is a lightweight, basic flying machine which does not have a pressurized cockpit. 
Yet, this simple machine allows its pilots to perform daredevil acts. And it was essential during the 1999 Operation Vijay in Kargil and the ongoing counterinsurgency operations in many parts of the country. The Mission Army candidates arrive at the Combat Army Aviation Training School, or CATS, in Indian Army lingo. Situated in the western Indian state of Maharashtra, CATS is the cradle where a select group of combat army officers trained to become daredevil aviators. Stick is called cyclic stick. This control here is called rudders. And you have a control here which is called collective. I'll go it again. Collective, cyclic and rudders. If I move this to right, it goes right. The aircraft nose goes to the right. And if you move it left, the aircraft nose goes to the left. The cyclic will be used to change the direction of the aircraft. The collective will be used to take the aircraft up or down as you raise it or lower it. Flying is combination of all, the, all these three controls which will be taught to you in the simulator. Before getting to operate the actual chopper, trainee pilots have to train on the Cheetah simulator. This simulator helps trainee pilots learn flying without wings. The simulator has proved to be a blessing for the Indian Army. It allows its officers to learn flying in a completely safe, realistic virtual environment without exposing them to risks associated with actual flying by novices. Nervousness Hori, especially when they've already said that if you don't clear the simulator part, you won't get to fly the helicopter. So this is very important. So we are all very serious and we are all very nervous also and very excited also. So that's a very important uh, combination. The fully automated simulator recreates a wide range of terrains and weather conditions, exposing the trainees to challenges that they may not encounter during the duration of now their course. This gap between the bar and the horizon. See? Okay, okay. Okay, now maintain this gap. It took off and uh, started moving. It was pure as a group rather. So I was getting a real feel uh, like uh, sitting in a helicopter. Are we moving forward or back? No, sir. We're just no? going backwards, sir. Yeah. Only thing which was lacking is her reaction to the scenarios which were being generated. What you need to understand is, in case you have to be a good flyer, you need to be ahead of the aircraft. You cannot let the aircraft dictate terms to you. It wasn't completely balanced. I was going towards extreme left or right. Then I tried to maintain it. Then what is it to, how do you put it in your forward? It looks as if Ela needs more time to internalize her simulator experience. We start moving. We are at 60 speed, so what is the motion? We are starting at a particular position. Yeah, what is going on? What is being distance upon time? I'm just doubting. If I discussed this before, I could have asked to the sir. Maintain the same direction. That is 270. Maintain speed 60 knots and maintain VSI zero. The experience with Kuldeep was the most challenging one, I must say. So how much power should I? Need? So is it mandatory for landing? Yes. I need to maintain 60 or I can increase now. So it was more of a question and answer session. We did a little bit of flying and uh, we were talking more about the systems within the aircraft. Although a very uh, inquisitive young man, he needs to just be a bit more relaxed in the cockpit. So which is the speed? Be. Speed is with this. This button? Speed is not with any button. Sir, should no. I try? You just leave, leave the controls. All yours? This way we'll crash, okay? That as he was moving, 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 he was moving. First time feeling from a clear window where the land is. Awesome travel. When you do a little bit, you'll have a helicopter like this. And here, you mean, it's actually happening. And you feel like it's crashing, it's happening, it's happening. The system also keeps a record of each trainee's performance, which helps instructors attend to an individual's shortcomings. Rudrashish has shown shades of brilliance. A few of the manuals he performed were actually good. But at the same time, he lacks a bit of application, which in case he builds up upon, he can be a good flyer. I think for the first time, I did pretty well. Or uh, it's very exciting. I didn't want to stop. <laughs>
Priyanka comes about as a feisty young lady. Certain amount of experience beforehand would have definitely helped. And the way she went about performing the various maneuvers, it was actually commendable. An aviator can make the most impact on the ground situation if he can reach the place of action as quickly as possible. Therefore, he needs mastery over navigation skills before he masters the helicopter. Getting lost in the skies and flying aimlessly is simply unacceptable in battle situations where every second counts. Flying is be high and be safe. However, the Army aviation is closely knit with the ground troops and our helicopters and our pilots need to fly low. In today's world, in today's battlefield, the number one priority of a pilot is to avoid detection. The Indian Army aviators are capable of NOE flying or nape of the earth flying to avoid getting noticed by the enemy. NOE flying involves helicopters flying at very low heights, closer to the ground. What we call hugging the earth. Nape of the earth flying requires a high degree of mastery in flying and maneuvering a chopper. NOE can enable a helicopter to sneak in up to the enemy and just come up and surprise it. Pilot flies following all the contours of the landscape below, be it hills, buildings, trees or water bodies. This way, the enemy finds it difficult to spot the helicopter as the enemy radar confuses the helicopters as part of the landscape. You hide yourself by entering Nala's you hide behind trees, you make use of the mountains and basically all the falls in the ground. When you are flying close to ground, you are subjected to a gush of adrenaline in common terms. Basically because the ground is passing at a very rapid pace under your feet and you are constantly fighting with your controls to follow the terrain. Flying is be high and be safe. However, the Army aviation uh, is closely knit with the ground troops and our helicopters and our pilots need to fly low. Here, the advanced light helicopter Dhruv is carrying out a nape of the earth flying mission. The advanced light helicopter named Dhruv is an indigenous helicopter developed and produced by Hindustan Aeronautics. ALH, advanced light helicopter. Basically, it's one of the machines which can take the man and machine which can both go to the extremes. You can make extreme banks, you can carry out maneuvers, you can go extreme dips. This aircraft can take a lot of load, the blades, everything. This is basically meant as one of the most maneuverable aircraft. The Dhruv is a multi-role, multi-mission helicopter. It is considered a highly safe helicopter and can even fly on autopilot. 
This aircraft is equipped with IADS. It's got four LCD screens which display, which tell you about all the engine parameters. Its onboard digital systems capture and relay a wide range of flight data to the crew, including a small chipping in any part of its body. It has got two computers inside. Everything is dual in this. If one goes bad, the other is there to back it up. Equipped with twin engines, the Dhruv can remain airborne even if one of its engines fails. Primarily designed for easy maintenance and uh, is one of the most finest machines that we have got. And uh, the endeavor is to carry out the activities uh, so as to keep the aircraft safe in the sky. And the pilot is able to dedicate his focus towards the mission, uh, especially required during high altitude flying. The Indian Army deploys ALH Dhruv for dropping special forces behind enemy lines during wars. Carrying out Gazavak on stretchers, combat, search and rescue operations, dropping supplies, stores and heavy equipment in the battlefield. It can carry 5.5 tons. At low altitudes, this chopper can carry up to 12 soldiers along with its two-member crew. This aircraft is one which can fly in extreme dark phase. You don't need any kind of external light or some kind of moonlight. You can take off, land, you can carry out all kind of operations with no light at all. First ride in the helicopter. I the chopper. I the chopper. Mission Army candidates can barely hold their excitement of their maiden chopper flight. Their grins say it all. Mission Army candidates were taken 4,500 feet above sea level in Thruv. It was really a beautiful experience. So today it's in front of me in real, so it's awesome. However, this is not a joyride. This flight has a purpose, to help them correlate what they have learned in navigation classes with real-life aerial observations of the terrain below. It remains to be seen as to who among these five has made the best use of the flight to sharpen his or her navigational skills. The seven-seater Chetak II is a multi-role helicopter equipped with an instant starting mechanism. This chopper gets ready to take off in less than a minute. Well suited to fly over plains and deserts. The Army deploys the Chetak for search and rescue operations, aerial reconnaissance and for troop transport. We are here for a final challenge. 
which will be called the navigation and rescue challenge. सबसे पहले कंटेस्टेंट को एक मैप दिया जाएगा जिसके ऊपर हमने दो पॉइंट मार्क किए थे पॉइंट अल्फा एंड पॉइंट ब्रावो इन्होंने नेविगेट करके पॉइंट अल्फा के पास जाना था पॉइंट अल्फा को आइडेंटिफाई करना था पॉइंट अल्फा को करेक्ट आइडेंटिफिकेशन के बाद इन्होंने पॉइंट ब्रावो के लिए सेट कोर्स करना था पॉइंट ब्रावो पे पहुंचने के बाद वहां पे जहाज को लैंड करना था वहां पे एक कैजुअलिटी थी जिसको इन्होंने अपने पास उठा के लेकर आना था उसको हेलीकॉप्टर में डालने के बाद इन्होंने वापस अपने बेस पे रिटर्न करना था नहीं डर वेरी कुछ नहीं लग रहे बस मजा आने वाला है नेविगेशन की टाइम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई बी गिविंग यू अ मैप यू नीड टू प्लॉट योर कोऑर्डिनेट्स फ्रॉम पॉइंट अल्फा यू नीड टू गो टू पॉइंट ब्रावो पिक अप अ कैजुअलिटी एंड ब्रिंग द कैजुअलिटी बैक टू बेस Rohan has his task cut out. Sitting inside the Jetak helicopter, he has to give a bearing of 141 degrees with a speed of 60 nautical miles per hour for the pilot to fly from the base to point alpha on the map. जैसे मैंने वो मेरा पॉइंट है लिखा इट वाज अ जंक्शन ऑफ टू रोड्स सो आई जस्ट लोकेटेड या दिस इज माय पॉइंट एंड आई जस्ट टोल्ड सर या दिस इज आर पॉइंट है पहला पॉइंट उसने बिल्कुल ठीक हिट किया सेकंड पॉइंट के लिए उसने गलत बेरिंग लगा ली जिसकी वजह से वो पूना की तरफ जा रहा था मैंने उसको बोला कि आप पूना जा रहे हो प्रॉम करने के बाद उसने सही बेरिंग वर्कआउट की और वो भी फिर वापस अपने पॉइंट की तरफ आना शुरू हो गया I wasted over there around uh, 15 to 30 seconds. So I was started searching, and then suddenly I identified that uh, towards my left there is a hill, and I uh, found that there is red flag also. जैसे ही वो हेलीकॉप्टर लैंडेड ऑन दी हिल, I just ran towards the uh, injured person, uh, took him on my back, and just ran towards the helicopter. Has successfully completed the task within the given time limit, rescued the casualty lying there, and returned to the base. Task completed, sir. Ah, film we type lag raha tha thoda aur. प्रियंका बहुत ही जोश वाली कंटेस्टेंट थी उसने सारे के सारे बेरिंग्स वगैरह करेक्टली लोकेट कर लिया था मेरा ओरिएंटेशन एकदम इतना परफेक्ट था मुझे इतना मजा आ रहा था और ऊपर से स्पेशली इंडिया देखने को इतना ऑसम लगता है प्रियंका हैज नेविगेटेड सक्सेसफुली शी स्पॉट्स द कैजुअलिटी एंड रशेस टू रेस्क्यू हिम बट डज नॉट लिफ्ट द कैजुअलिटी ऑन हर शोल्डर्स ये जो रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन था उसके अंदर उसने कैजुअलिटी को अपने साथ में ही लेकर दौड़ा के ला रही थी और बीच में कैजुअलिटी गिर भी गई थी क्योंकि उसने कैजुअलिटी को सपोर्ट देने के बजाय उसको भगाना ज्यादा बेहतर समझा जब वो एयरफील्ड के पास आ गई तब भी उसको एयरफील्ड नहीं मिल रही थी तो मैंने उससे पूछा कि इतनी बड़ी एयरफील्ड है और आपको क्यों नहीं मिल रही है उसने सडनली लेफ्ट को देखा बोलती सर 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 मेरे से गलती होगी और फिर उसने जहाज को लेफ्ट को टर्न करवाया और हम वापस आ पाए Ila had failed to impress the instructors during her simulator and navigation sessions. Will she manage to cope up with the complexities of navigation and rescue?
बेरिंग सर को मैंने बताई हमें मुझे पता था कि टाइम विल बी सम फोर मिनट्स फोर्टी सेकेंड्स सो जैसे ही चार मिनट चालीस सेकेंड होगा मुझे पता है कि मेरा गाँव आ जाएगा शिंडे विलेज तो आई जस्ट केप दैट इन माइंड और उसके साथ हम लोग चलते गए उसने बेरिंग्स बिल्कुल सही वर्कआउट की थी और वो अपने पॉइंट्स को भी आइडेंटिफाई कर रही थी बट जब वो पॉइंट ब्रावो के पास आई तो उसको पॉइंट ब्रावो नहीं मिला और वो पॉइंट ब्रावो के आगे निकल गई थी उस समय मेरा ध्यान बस ये था कि कब मुझे लाल फ्लैग दिखे जैसे एक टर्न लिया तब मुझे नजर नहीं आया जब नेक्स्ट ओवर करके टर्न लेने लगे देन आई कुड फिगर आउट द रेड फ्लैग सर ने फिर चॉपर को नीचे लिया थोड़ा सा रोका जैसे ही चॉपर रुका बिल्कुल ध्यान नहीं दिया मैंने मेरा जो हेडफोन जो था वो मेरे सर पे ही था जैसा रश जब वो उतरी है उस टाइम पे अपने साथ ही हेडसेट ले गई जिसकी वजह से वहाँ पे उसको थोड़ा टाइम लॉस हो गया तो हैविंग नेविगेटेड वेल इला लॉस्ट प्रेशर सेकंड्स इन हर ईगरनेस टू गेट टू द कैजुअलिटी नेविगेशन क्लास में हमें नींद आ रही थी पूरे थके हुए थे सर कुछ समझा रहे थे कुछ समझ कुछ और आ रहा था कुछ डिग्री एंगल कुछ समझ खास आया नहीं लेकिन कोशिश की पकड़ने की कि वो नॉर्थ को फेसिंग करके मैप को हमें देखना चाहिए मेरे को तो लगा नहीं कुछ नेविगेशन में होगा इसलिए मैं ज्यादा ध्यान नहीं दिया जैसी मैंने वो देखा तो मेरी हालत तो होगी पतली तो इतना पता नहीं था मतलब इतना कुछ करना पड़ेगा कैलकुलेशन तो टेंशन बड़ी दौड़ने लगी ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू सर चक्कर ये हुआ कि आई वॉज बिट कन्फ्यूज दैट हमें बेरिंग पे ज़्यादा इंपॉर्टेंस देनी है डायरेक्शन पे जो हमारा अल्फा पॉइंट था एन एच आई फिफ्टी इट वॉज मार्क्ड बट नॉट पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट वॉज देयर तो आई के साथ से मैंने उसको मेकआउट किया मैंने सर दिस आवर अल्फा पॉइंट जब पहले पॉइंट से मैंने उसको बोला कि दूसरे पॉइंट पर जाने के लिए उसने दो बार ही अपनी बेरिंग चेंज की कुलदीप इज रेसिंग अगेंस्ट टाइम ही सीम्स टू बी पेइंग द प्राइस फॉर नॉट बींग अटेंटिव ड्यूरिंग नेविगेशन लेसन मैं अपने देसी तरीके से मैं जानता था कि मैं बिल्कुल एक्जैक्टली अपोजिट डायरेक्शन में जाना पीछे की तरफ मेरे को नेविगेशन क्लास हुई तो मुझे बोलना यही पड़ेगा कि कितने डिग्रीज पे फॉर्म करने के बाद उसने फिर दोबारा वर्कआउट की बेरिंग लेकिन वहाँ से जो ब्राउ पॉइंट की बेरिंग थी वो मैंने गलत निकाली हुई थी वो मेरी अस्सी डिग्री पे थी लेकिन वो एक्चुअल में दो डिग्री था कुलदीप माइट नॉट है बेरिंग राइट बट इज प्रेजेंस ऑफ माइंड गॉट इन टू दैजी इन टाइम मैं ढूंढने लगा मैं लाल झंडा की कहीं बात सुनी थी लाल झंडा लाल झंडा तो मैंने जैसी लाल झंडा देखा मैं सर लाल झंडा प्लीज लो जल्दी लो He somehow manages to reach Point Bravo with some assistance from the helicopter crew. He makes up for some of his mistakes by performing casualty rescue exactly as prescribed. Casualty ko wo sabse josh mein utha ke laya jo ki baakiyo mein बड़ा मजा आया जैसे कि कहीं रेस्क्यू मतलब कहीं वॉर से वॉर सिचुएशन में रेस्क्यू करने जा रहा हूँ किसी टॉप पे तो बिल्कुल वैसे ही लगा बहुत ही मजा आया बहुत ज्यादा मजा आया thrill aspect came in i don't know what it was but it was a lot of uh, power uh, around me around the chopper and since i was on the edge i could feel it right in my face so once we reached uh, point uh, alpha and he asked me to uh, identify exactly what uh, point alpha would be which also i was able to identify uh, and then after that i gave him a bearings to point bravo usne sare points aasani se identify kar liye aur uske jo bearings usne work out ki thi wo bhi bilkul theek thak thi So far, Rudrashish has performed flawlessly, navigating the chopper to the given points. जहाँ वो मार खा गया वो ये था कि जब casualty को लाना था तब वो casualty को दौड़ा के लाया, which was a negative point. An army aviator has to be a combination of a ferocious on-ground combatant, 
proficient flyer and a compassionate human being who cares for those needing his help. Slipping up on the empathy part will definitely impact Rudrashish's standing in this task. The results are out and one thing is clear. Those who applied their learnings properly showed care and compassion for the casualty and finished the job in the least possible time have scored better. And the winner of this entire event at the aviation base is Rohan. Well done, Rohan. Rohan has outshone everyone else. Ela and Kuldeep are tied for the first runner-up position for not picking up the casualty like Kuldeep and Rohan. Rudrashish occupies the second runner-up slot and Priyanka is in fourth place. Mission Army candidates have had a field day at the Combat Army Aviation Training School. Flying in a military chopper has had their adrenaline rushing and they surely are not going to forget these electrifying moments. They now rush to live the life of an army engineer on and off the battlefield.